Antoni. Nonno, brother Antoni. Hey, Br brother... Brother Billy, it has come to my attention. Well, it's come to my attention because I actually was looking on the internet. That's I was, sometimes I do that because it's the modern world. If you want to know something, you look on the internet. Sometimes if you don't want to know anything, you still look on the internet because, well, it's a distraction. However, when I was looking, I remember not being distracted. Maybe I was being distracted. Anyway, when I was looking there, I was like, uh, can you just hold this for just a, just a second? Look, I, got, God, look at I got a piece of paper. Oh, it was hidden in the folds of my book. Oh, here we go. Thank you, thank you, brother. Now, on this internet article, it's a whole two pages that I printed mm -hmm. out. It was so important that I had to print it out. Because mm -hmm. I was sharing it with people. Mm -hmm. Because people I hang out with, sometimes they don't have access to the internet. So oh, I yes. had to do that stuff, you know. Anyway, it starts out by saying, the internet is replete with apologies for the rich. They are thinly sourced and even less well thought. The goal is simple, to justify the unjustifiable chasm between the rich and poor, globally and within our nation, talking about, you know, North America, well, United States. But the irony is that rather than being better than the rest of us, in many ways, the rich are worse. And they say a bunch of stuff they go on there. But one of the things they say, in laboratory experiments, for instance, a wealthy participants were more likely to take valued goods, cheat, lie, and endorse such behavior. Mm. Think about that. That's deep. You know, then they, they in fact, they even, well, I'm going to get to that part right here. Okay, here, here, here there's something else here. Say, the rich tend to behave badly, but their bad behaviors are often socially accepted. Mm. Mm -hmm. A behavior that would be seen as inappropriate by a poor person is seen as a minor offense by the rich. I've noticed that myself. Mm. You know, that's, that's bad. For instance, like casual drug use is what they, they talk about, you know. Uh, the reason is simple. In a society that worships wealth, though, uh, um, well, well, those with wealth are worshipped as well. Mm -hmm. Now, now they, they cite a, a young economist, they say, wrote in 1844. 1844 is like the, the beginning of that robber baron era. Well, it's not the beginning, but before that. You know, that's when the money stuff started really blow up, at least in, in the States. He, this, this young economist wrote, the extent of the power of money is the extent of my power. Money's properties are the possessors, make him, properties and essential powers. I am bad, dishonest, unscrupulous, stupid, but money, this is an important part, but money is honored and hence its possessor is honored. Mm. Money is the supreme good, therefore its possessor is good. Mm. That's one of those philosophical mm. kind of things, you know, a priori kind of things. Money besides saves me the trouble of being dishonest. I am therefore presumed honest. <laughs> That's pretty mm. slick. I am brainless, but money is the real brain of all things and how they, and, and, and of course, if money is the, you know, the brain of all things, then how then could he be, you know, a possessor of being brainless? That's what he's saying here. Mm. I think those are good points. Mm. Now, now I've got to, one more thing I want to just point out here. Studies have shown uh, that people attribute negative characteristics to victims. Now they said this thing from the 60s, they say uh, like from Kent State students being shot by the National Guard, well that's Kent State, but a couple of weeks later they had Jackson State in Mississippi to up there with shooting black students and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, uh, they're, they're really victims. And you can see it, uh, sort of like young black men today are shot by police. You know, mm. and then they look like the police is innocent, the black person is guilty. You see mm. how that works? And I understand that. And and they're not even talking about low low wage workers. You mm. know, so that's that's what they're talking about there. So I thought that was very interesting. But then it gets more interesting because at the end here, well near the end, 
this guy, he says, characteristics, characteristics, we would stereotypically associate with say, oh, that's a word I can't use. Oh, let me change it. Characteristics, we would stereotypically associate to say, rectal, rectal sphincters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, they are, you know, well, that's what they are. Those, those characteristics, that's what the rich people have. And that's what they're saying. But at the end, he's really saying, he's saying that, look, all humans are delusional. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. All humans are delusional. It is only the rich who have that delusion fostered, <laughs> promoted, you see. Mm -hmm. All humans are, to some extent, rectal sphincters. But only rich people can get away with being a rest of rectal sphincter. Mm. See how that works? Mm. Now, I'm not saying it's worth it to be rich, but hey, it's just a matter of mentality. If you think you're rich, I guess you can go around saying, hey, I'm good, <laughs> I'm good. Mm. And nobody can challenge you if you're rich and you look rich. In fact, one of the things they say here, too, is that they have these things that if you're well-groomed, mm. even if you're, you know, an African, if you're well groomed, mm -hmm. they're gonna give you more than if you, you know, well, that makes sense, you see? Yeah. So, better brush your hair, brush your hair, <laughs> all that stuff in the morning so you'd be looking good, mm -hmm. you know? Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you yeah. because, well, it was important. It was a distraction, but it was a distraction that led to something that made me think. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, those kind of things, you don't actually have to think, but you can see it, you know it. Yeah. The mm -hmm. problem is that we accept it, mm -hmm. not good. Anyway, they said, yeah, I'm, I'm accepting it. Actually, I'm not accepting it because I don't have to accept anything, you know? Because as a person, as an arts director emeritus, I don't accept these things. And that, that would be, you know, this is a dispatch from that arts director emeritus. That would be me, T, from the Patterson's Technic Trench to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. Mm -hmm.